Hello, Kingdom family. Welcome to Inspirations by Terry. Hope everyone is doing well, and I'm glad you are tuning in to day four of Marriage Yah's Way. I hope you are enjoying the little series that we're doing, and it's bringing um, knowledge and information that maybe you didn't hear before to yourselves. And I'm encouraging everyone that the scriptures that I'm giving you to make sure you go back and read the scriptures. Don't just take my word for it. Read them yourselves. Read the whole chapter so you can get so you can gain understanding. Okay. So today, our scripture um, reference is going to be Romans chapter seven, verses one through three. Okay. So, if you'd like to read along with me, you may. I am reading from the King James Version of the Bible, and it says here, number one, Know ye not, brethren, that I speak to them that know the law. If you are a child of the Most High Yahuwah, you should know what the law is because he tells us throughout the Bible and throughout the scriptures that we should keep his commandments, which are the law, and that we should keep his law that he was that was given to us, his children, to Israel. So um, if you don't know the law, you can start with the Ten Commandments and you can start by reading your Bible from Genesis all the way through and he, you will know what the law of the Most High is. The, um, the Bible tells us in um, 2 Timothy to study to show ourselves approved that a workman needed not be ashamed when he rightly divides the word of truth. And how can you rightly divide the word of truth if you don't know the word? So. And we're not all going to be scholars of the word, but we do need to study and we need to read so we know what we're talking about. And when we're reading, we are able to help others if they come to us with um, a problem. We know the word so we can share with them, right? So, okay, we're going to start it over again. It says, Know ye not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the law, how that the law hath dominion over a man as long as he liveth for the woman which hath an husband is bound by the law to her husband so long as he liveth but if the husband be dead she is loosed from the law of her husband so that if while her husband liveth she is married to another man she shall be called an adulteress. But if her husband be dead, she is free from the law so that she is no adulteress, though she is married to another man. And we're gonna stop right there. And I encourage you to go back and read the whole chapter so you can gain understanding. But um, the word is telling us there that if, um, if a woman or a man be married to another person as long as their spouse is alive that they married initially they are in error that is wrong because a spouse is still alive so um the word is here for our instruction for our correction for our reproof and for doctrine so when you hear the word you don't need to be ashamed you don't need to feel um anything you need to repent you need to trust the Most High because He's faithful. It says um, in 1 John 1, 9 that if we confess our sins, that He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness, not some, but all. But we first have to acknowledge our error and turn. So when you repent, you don't remain in the sin. You have to turn and get yourself out of there. And whatever the sin you may be doing, you could be murdering, lying, stealing, cheating, um, gossiping, whatever it is, when you repent, you forsake that thing and you no longer partake in it. A lot of people think you can repent and remain in a, in a situation, but that's not so. If you repent, you have to remove yourself from the situation. So that is our scripture I'm reading for today. And as always, I'm going to leave you with um, a love scripture where um, to encourage you in your your matrimony or in your state of love because the Bible says that love covers a multitude of sins, right? So our love verse for today is Ephesians 4, 2 through 3. It says, be completely humble 
and gentle. Be patient, bearing one another in love. So when it comes to your spouse or when it comes to your marriage, it's the Bible's instructing us to be completely humble. That means we shouldn't be high-minded or we shouldn't be haughty or have pride. We should humble ourselves with one another and be gentle and patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. Make every effort, it says, to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. What is the what does bond mean? Bond is a strong emotional connection that fosters trust. And how do you gain this bond with your spouse? It's through communication, through support, through mutual respect, hearing one another out, giving the other person the opportunity to share their view, their point of view, and then you listening to the other person's point of view, and then whether you agree or not, have mutual respect, and allowing both individuals, this allows both individuals to thrive. When you show mutual respect, when you have a strong emotional connection, and you support one another, your marriage will thrive, and you will see changes in your, in your union, because that's what love is. It is, it prefers the other person above yourself. It's selfless. Loving someone is denying yourself and, and putting that, pers that other person's feelings above your own. That's what love is. It covers a multitude of sins. So I want to thank you for tuning in today. I thank you for um, coming along with me on this little series on day four. Be blessed. If you came into the room, like the video. If you're not a subscriber, subscribe. And if you liked what you heard, share the video with others that they may um, hear what you heard. Be blessed. Until tomorrow, I'll see you then. Take care. Bye.